quality life because it, it makes the most sense as a complete piece of work. Um, and so the only way we thought we could do that would be to, to perform that first and then that's the, the first half of the show and then the second half is is the uh, the more of the, the sort of show that we played last time you know it was like a almost like a history of the band you know throughout the, you know the last 12 years a, a selection of songs and that's that's um, roughly what we intend to do this time um, the performance of brave is quite an intense thing and you know I think we're a bit concerned because uh, the Mexican audience are so enthusiastic and we get the feeling that they just want to have a great time and party and, you know, and, and Brave as an album can be quite intense and there's some atmospheric and some down sections to it, but um, we found that, that um, in Europe it works really well. The whole thing is like a, a trip, you know, there was people in the audiences in, in Europe just standing there with their mouths open for the entire 73 minutes or whatever it is, and then they just have this massive release where they just go mad for the second half because, you know, it's like a antidote to the first half, you know? It becomes a rock and roll show, I suppose, at that point, but before that it's like a movie. Um to some extent. It's, it's, it's a more dramatic and theatrical piece of work to start with. Um, and it, it's always a bit of a worry because you're asking people to sit and think and be entertained in a different way, be entertained in another part of their mind to the, the part of their mind that, that, that parties. Um, and so I'd likened it Flippantly, I'd said it's a bit like a trip to the art gallery followed by a trip to the circus. You know, it's like you, we'll take them around the art museum and go look at that picture, and then we'll take them over the road to the fairground and go, hey, let's have a good time. And the show's a bit like that. Well, essentially, it's a long story, but the album was inspired by um, um, a radio broadcast, which was an uh, appeal from the police to the general public in the uh, in the area of Bristol in England about five years ago. The police had found a, a girl wandering on the, uh, the big suspension bridge between England and Wales. It's a bit like the Golden Gate Bridge. It's a massive suspension bridge. It's a motorway bridge. And they found a teenage girl wandering alone uh, next to the, the freeway there. And um, she was so traumatized and so confused when they picked her up that she wouldn't speak to them at all. And out of desperation, after they'd had her at the police station for a couple of days or something, they made a, an appeal on the radio in case any of the general public might know who she was. They described her and described where she'd been picked up. And I was working in the area at the time, and I heard that radio broadcast. And I thought it was very sad, as it was very moving as a story. It was something that was true. And yet it was a mystery. It was like the first page of a book, you know, so many unanswered questions. How had she got there? Where was she going? What had happened to her to, to traumatize her so badly? Um, was she going to jump from the bridge? Um, great many unanswered questions. Um, and I wrote it all down in my diary, you know, uh, at the time. And I thought, well, maybe one day I'll write a song for her or, or about her, although I don't know who she is. I'll write a song. And I forgot all about it, and then it resurfaced. You know, we, we'd, we'd written about four or five songs uh, for what was going to become Brave, and the songs took me back to her. They, you know, they, they reminded me of her, and they set me off thinking about her again. And I went and dug out all my old diaries, found the notes that I'd originally made all those years ago, and came to the band and said, what if we make an album which is a piece of fiction, but could be her story, you know, and start the album with the girl on the bridge and the police, and then take t take the story straight back to the moment of her birth, and take take the story from a narration into her mind, boom, where she's explaining everything she refused to say to the police. She's going to say to she's going to say in the music, uh, and it went from there. I, I was really, um, I was really just trying to paint a picture of a young girl who'd, who'd grown up in a very dysfunctional situation. Um, first of all, she'd, she'd been sexually abused by her father as a young girl. The reason I felt the need to include that as a subject in a song was that um, I'd become amazed 
uh, by the massive increase in r reported cases of sexual abuse across Europe um, and felt that um, somebody should address it. Somebody should, somebody should say it's not taboo, you can talk about these things. Um, and, and, and to talk about them publicly, um, uh, really as a kind of a show of sympathy to those those girls and boys to some extent who, who've been victim of this, and um, and so I was trying to paint this picture of a young girl who's grown up in a house where she's been very very suffocated by this experience and the effect that it's then had on her parents who are trying to pretend that it never happened. They're, they're trying to deny it's happened. The frantic cleaning of the house by her mother, uh, the frantic attention to, to tidiness and to domesticity, which, which can come about as, as, a, as a reaction to guilt. You know, if I, if I keep the house clean, then we're respectable. It doesn't matter what we do when no one's looking. But, you know, if, if we have a guest around, then every, there's no dust on the mantelpiece. Um, and, and I sort of took that a stage further to include the idea of the hypocrisy of these people who go to church every Sunday, you know, and kneel down and pray to God. Not because they want to talk to God, but be, be, they want to be seen by the person next to them to be pious, you know, they, because that gives them a respectability, just as these politicians want to be seen to be praying to God, but not in a little church, in a big one, you know, in a church for, for important people. People, and that ho the whole way that religion can be used as, as a, um, a, a prestige, a symbol of prestige, a symbol of, of your class, if you like. You know, in, in England, the aristocracy always go to church on Sunday, but they go to church together, you know, in the Green Range Rovers. They go to church to be seen. That's, they, you know, it's, that's the... Uh and so it was just, it's not, I'm not knocking religion, of course, because if, if you believe in, in, in God and if you believe in the, in the, in the teachings of, of, of Christ or Buddha or Allah or whichever God you happen to kneel to, um, if that makes you a better person and if that makes you relate to people with more love, then it's a good thing. So I'm not... I'm not just some English upstart scumbag who's going to religion. That's not what I'm doing. I, I, I'm just, I'm just trying to point out how, how religion, as well as, as well as well as love, as well as sex, as well as power, as well as money, can be abused. All these things are there to, to do positive things or to be abused and, and become cancers. Yes, if I could speak Spanish, I would say more than muchas gracias, but um, <laughs> no, um, it's uh, it's something we're really looking forward to coming back here in September, because like, the, uh, the last time we played here a couple of years ago, it was a big surprise to us. We'd never played in Mexico before, and, and that audience was just fantastic. The place was great, and uh, so hopefully we can uh, live up to the expectations of the next show. And um, Thanks very much for listening to all this old bollocks. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to say it can't really be any better because the, the, the last show is about as good as it gets. But it'll be different. Uh, and, and hopefully, uh, we, we'll, as Mike said, we'll live up to your expectations. I'd like to say, um, I'd like to say sorry. We, we, we come here so rarely. It's a shame we can't, can't get here uh, more often. It's a shame we can't stay longer. Um, but uh, with the next album, hopefully we'll come and we'll, we'll, we won't just play Mexico City, we'll, we'll move around, we'll stay with you a bit longer. And uh, thanks. Adios amigos.